Oh, old wasp here tra trapped in the old uh, cobweb. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest with you, buddy. It's not looking good for you. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to this video. Now we're gonna have a look at one of my part exchanges that's come in. Now I've just sold a Dacia Sandero, little 1.2 petrol that we bought from Pre's Motor Auction Aston Barclay all oh, about six weeks ago. Car's been on sale, had a lot of interest in it and it's now finally gone out. Old boy's had it and he's been down and given his part exchange in, which is an old Citroen Xara Picasso. Now I offered him 250 pounds for this because basically I hadn't seen the car and to be honest with you, he didn't really want a lot for it. And the way he was describing it, it seemed quite just an old, probably worn out Citroen Picasso. I wasn't really expecting it to be in the condition or certainly with the paperwork that's come with it. This car's probably a little bit better than I was actually expecting. Anyway, I gave 250 pounds for it because at that level we can't lose. It'll probably scrap for more than that. And that's where I ultimately thought the car would probably end up. I was scrapping it or I'd just go and speak to one of my friends in the train and they wanted to have a go of it, they could just give me my money back on it and get rid of it. Basically, we just need the space. However, when it got dropped off and actually looked through the paperwork and had a quick look around it, I was actually genuinely surprised. Even more so when I actually moved it. So anyway, the car is here. Let's go outside and have a look at this Xara Picasso. Okay, here it is. A 2005 plate, old Citroen Xara Picasso. Two litre HDI, best engine they ever did in the Xara Picasso in my opinion. They did do a petrol versions, 1.8s and 1.6s, uh, and they also did the 1.6 diesel later on, and of course the two litre HDI, which we've got here, which I think is overall is the best engine of the bunch. Now, it's in a nice blue colour, quite like it. Uh, the Xara Picasso, I've sold loads of these over the years. I actually really liked them, they were really popular. They were actually a decent French car. They had the faults, don't get me wrong, but they weren't too bad, very practical MPV. And actually, it, it carried on in production, actually when the new Picasso, the Mark II Picasso came out in 2007, they actually continued these on for about three or four years afterwards. You can actually see these on 10 or even 11 plates I've seen them on. So they say they such good longevity, really decent practical car. Now this one isn't perfect by any means, but it's a little bit better than what I was thinking it would turn up like. Um, now let's have a quick look around it, it's, a, it's in the blue, there's good signs and there's bad signs here, but let's just go through it and give it a fair assessment. So it's got daft decent tyres on it, evergreens, not too bad, about 4 mil tread on it, we've got original wheel trims on it, the bodywork isn't too bad on this side, although you can straight away point out that there's a problem with the sills, they've been welded up, really common on Zagara Picassos, I've welded many of these up over the years, they usually go here on the sort of bottom of the door itself, on the flat bit, they usually get water in them and sort of rot them out, occasionally they'll go at the back as well here, they can go soft, that's actually quite solid there but it's definitely been welded up uh, the side as well and unfortunately on the opposite side the welding's okay i wouldn't say it's the best weld i've ever seen but the plate is certainly structurally sound it's very solid but it could have been tidied up a little bit better they've got a big shots line on it as well which has ruined it a little bit it's a real shame actually because it's a bit of a scruffy job it could have been made a bit better and they're smartened up with very little e extra effort but anyway let's just crack on it's generally okay it's got quite a lot of polish over it which i think the guy's probably had an attempt at polishing it up for me bless him uh, but it's not too bad on this side it's actually quite a straight old thing tire on the back is near enough new delente okay budget tire literally probably eight mil still on it it's barely been running around the back it's not too bad someone's had a, a very small attempt at sort of blowing in the back there an aerosol should have just left it alone really there's a few water marks on it but all they will polish out the car itself for 18 years of age is pretty much as expected to be honest with you moving on to the near side we've got uh, again matching wheel trims all on the car the quarter's not too bad, the door's not bad, this door's not bad, the sill again has been painted half and half, for some reason they've decided to paint half the sill and leave the other half in paint. Um, they've got a bit of Schultz up the door which wants coming off which is easily done and it has had a plate, you, know, you can quite see there at the bottom. Now they made a smarter job of that, they've actually made it to a crease line so you can barely see it, but again they've just Schultz it with a flick can and just made a mess of it. It could be smartened up that could for very little money both sides, it's just a very sloppy job, I mean it just could have been masking off properly and even if you're going to Schultz line it, you could have just done it, made it a bit more neater and made a better job of it. But the thing that lets this down is actually this wing here, which is a real shame when I noticed this. Because someone's, it's obviously been damaged or it's been caught or scraped, and someone has had a go at flick canning it. Uh, and they've made a pig's ear of it. It's a proper flick can job, it's horrible, there's a bit of filler in there as well. I mean, 
the wing itself is quite straight it's not doesn't look too bad in that regard it's just not been painted well it should have been done properly with a with a gun and it needed blending as well it might go into the door and into the bumper just to set it off nicely but i suppose if you've just got a flick can you just want to tidy it up it's probably better than having a primed wing i guess but it's just a shame that someone hasn't just taken the care to have it painted properly to get that rectified you'd have to probably take that badge off because it's obviously you can't paint over that Bet yourself a new uh, decal badge, have it painted properly and have it matched in. But would you bother? That's the question. We have got two keys for it. By the way, front's very clean as well. Forgot to mention the front. Central locking is working. Doors are opening without any sort of real dramas. Usually on these, the do doors, particularly the back ones, they dry out the hinges and they make a horrible racket. You open them up and we're like, Urgh! they sound like a creaky old 70 year old man with bad joints. But these are all right, actually. They've been greased. You can tell as someone's been uh, servicing it and maintaining the door hinges because they are very common. Uh, we'll start at the back first now, Mia. Three standard seats. The old dinner table's in there. Very spacious family car, the old Picasso. Oh, wind me down windows in the back. Less to worry about, I suppose. In the front. Obviously, what in a valley, obviously. But not too bad, actually, to be fair. Inside, five-speed manual. Uh, I have noticed the gear stick is a uh, little bit lovely in chrome. Is uh, detached, so it wants to uh, put it back on properly, that with uh, some sort of uh, adhesive. Uh, we've got service pack here. We'll go for that in a minute. Quickly just uh, start it up. Make sure it's not in gear. Fire straight into life, no issues at all. We've got no warning lights on, nothing's good up on the dash. It's only done 78,000 miles this car. And look, look at the diesel in it. My word, am I going to be using this car this week? This is coming home with me. Well, I've never seen a car with so much fuel in. But uh, yeah, really nice inside. HDI, it's, it's, it's okay inside. It just wants to clean. It is a bit, you know, it wants a valet, but a valet will transform this car inside. Revving up absolutely fine. I can't see any smoke out the back. It seems pretty decent. Little box is cleared out in there. History wise, oh, check the radio's working actually. Yep. Smooth there, we've got a bit of smooth on. Touch of ABBA, beautiful. Now, this is what's impressed me with this car it's the history of it. Um, now, I'm going to go quickly go through some of it. I don't want to go too mad of it. I'm just going to try not to give away the man's details, but we've got here. Uh, brake pipe being made up there, we've got full service done there, suspension work being done on it, these all recently last few years. Uh, we've got, what's the one here for, wash pump motor, that one's for some tyres, an MOT, what else has been done on there, yeah, tyres and MOT and a service again. This one is for a battery, it's recent that was, in the last 18 months, so it's got a decent battery on it. Clutch kit, this was only dated 78,000 miles, that is recent. There you go, 2022 dated, 11th, 21st of the 11th. So that's had a clutch in it less than a year ago. A brand new clutch, three piece clutch, 679 quid for a clutch for this. Wow, that is uh, expensive. Um, you should have been about 200, that's about 200 pound overcharge, that is, in my opinion. But there you go, it's been done. Uh, we've got another one there for some wiper blades, some more servicing. There is quite a lot there, to be fair. There's a bit in this book as well. Basically, what I'm trying to say to you guys, it's got decent history. It's been well looked after, albeit on a budget, but it has been looked after. The things have been done to it that most people expect to be done on a newish car, never mind a car that's 18 years of age. Just before we carry on looking at this car, guys, just a quick shout out to today's channel sponsor, our good friends at Vehicle Score. Now, if you're going to buy a car, guys, you need to make sure you get it checked out correctly. Now, you need to do that, you need to make sure you get a proper in depth search, and I'd recommend Vehicle Score. Now, Vehicle Score is a completely free service to use. You can go to vehiclescore.co.uk and you can carry out one of their basic checks, like I said, for absolutely nothing. So, just log on to vehiclestore.co.uk. It's available on desktop and also on a mobile app, and just type in your registration. So, I'm going to use a car now that's literally just landed here. It's actually in stock in front of me. It's a Ford Focus. Uh, so it's Yankee Sierra 12, Yankee Foxtrot Golf. And click on Get Score. 
Now, by clicking on Get Score, it's going to give us a score ranging from sort of 1 to 999, a bit like a credit score, and in doing so, it will give us our own personal score to that individual car and compare it to sort of averages of others around it. Now, our score for this car is 688, but on the average score, it's actually 608, so it's actually just slightly above average. Now, vehicle scores for each check, like I said, you don't need to register to use it. You can actually get lots of really decent information. It'll give you all sorts of information on the vehicle details, tax rates, etc. It'll give you information on the mileage history it'll give you an estimated valuation so you can actually see what the car's actually potentially worth by using auto trader as sort of a basis it will give you an estimated value uh, so ours is coming out at 3866 to 48 well our vehicle's priced at 3495 so maybe i need to put the price up only joking life estimated lifespan it's just giving you a rough idea of other vehicles around it similar cars what mileage they've achieved before they've been sort of taken off the road so that's quite a good indication of how many miles are left in a vehicle it's giving you loads of free information and of course it also gives you the MLT history of the car and from that is how it devises its score so you can go through all the history and check it and compare and see what pass rates are like as you've got mileage checkers it's just got loads of loads of free information all available to you which you can use to make an informed decision when buying a car and if you're looking for sort of a bit more for it you can try out their salvage and ultimate reports the salvage plus reports checks out vehicles to see if they've ever been an unrecorded write-off now if you go and get a general HPI search done online guys this will not include anything that's unrecorded write-offs a standard HPI will look at cars for instance if they've been categorized by an insurance company so if they're cat D or cat C or we now call them cat N and cat S now it won't include unrecorded write-offs a lot of cars guys now are unfortunately are going through not going through the insurance companies and then are going to end up in salvage auctions but what the salvage plus report does from vehicle score is it searches the database of all the salvage auctions in the UK to see if that car has ever been through a salvage auction and you can actually see the pictures of it whether it was damaged what it was like because at the end of the day guys you won't want to pay top money for a car that's been involved in a serious accident so by having a salvage plus report done it's less than the price of a cup of coffee you can get peace of mind to make sure your car has never been an unrecorded write-off it also includes stolen checks if it's been used as a taxi a general salvage check unrecorded write-offs keepers checks import and export checks as well and, then, and make sure it's never been on a scrap market and if you want all the bells and whistles, you can go for the ultimate report. The ultimate report includes all the checks you get in the salvage report, a general HBI check as well. So you're checking the insurance register to make sure it isn't a cat C or a cat D or cat N or cat S as we now call them. It'll check it for mileage clocking, making sure there's no being color changes or anything like that. But also it'll cover you for finance check. It's gonna carry out a finance check on the car, make sure it's not got any outstanding finance. About one in nine vehicles that are checked on vehicle score have got outstanding finance on. That might be higher purchase or a loan that's been taken out against the car or a logbook loan which are really common and don't think as well if you're only buying like a thousand pound car but it might not have any finance on believe me i've done it i've seen this when i used to run auctions a lot of people used to bring me cars in very cheap cars and still would have outstanding finance on them albeit logbook loans and stuff like that so it's absolutely crucial that when you're buying a car you make sure you have your check done i recommend vehicle score like i said the basic service is free and car uk viewers get a discount if you want to carry out one of the further checks so a salvage check ultimate check you'll get an extra 15 percent off by using the promo code car uk 15 so type in car uk 15 and you'll get 15 percent off so make sure you use vehiclescore.co.uk you can find the link in the description click on the link and get yourself on there and give them a try let's have a quick look in the boot i'm interested to see actually because i've not been in the boot yet has it got the old yeah shopping cart in there these are great if you ever met everyone's had a picasso half of these are always missing but what i think these were the reason these are missing is most people used to steal them and take them out when they sold the car but these little shopping carts i'll just assemble it for you there we go look at that a little 18 kilo shopping cart beautiful imagine going around shopping going around the supermarket with that we'll get your onions and your peas beautiful but again just shows to show don't it everything's there it's it's probably been a loved car this to be fair someone has looked after it let's pop the bonnet oh oh wasp here tra trapped in the old uh, cobweb oh I'll, I'll be honest with you buddy it's not looking good for you anyway um under the bonnet we shall see arguably one of the best diesel engines of the 1990s the 2 litre Peugeot Citroen HDI engine 
brilliant engine uh, like I say it's carried on from the 1.9 diesel engines that was in the early Peugeots and Citroëns of the 90s you know it was had 405s 406s the early 306s and then they became the 2 litre HDI in about 98 99 went in the 306 406 and continued on in this Picasso uh, good engine a little bit less horsepower a few horsepower down on the previous model uh, engine but a lot better on fuel these did about 50 55 to the gallon and this is in the like sort of late 90s and some diesels today will do more than that but at the time two litre diesel engine doing 50 odd to the gallon pretty decent okay so shut that door get the noise out um i think before we go and uh, make a decision on this car i think it'd be fair to go and drive it let's go and see what it's like how it drives and then if it's okay maybe we can have a look underneath it as well so Let's not just make a decision just yet, because although it looks a bit scruffy in places, I think there might be a car under it, but we need to drive it. It's proofs in the pudding. If it drives like a dog, there's only one place this is going, and that is probably to the scrapyard. So let's rig up the trade plates, get the camera set up, and go for a drive in it. Right. On the button, never in doubt. Okay, we're off. How does it drive? Well, pulling off, nice turbo pulling in nice there, just where it should. We've got no smoke in the rear view mirror, it's always a good sign. It's in a nice straight line, we're not veering anywhere. Clutch is decent, we've got a nice bike point on it. What the brakes like, we've come to a set of traffic lights now. Not too bad actually, not too shabby. We're braking in a straight line. Very, very tiny bit of brake squeal, I mean very tiny. We'll have a look at the brakes obviously if we, were, if we ever were going to do anything with it might just want to strip and clean maybe but yeah again pulling off pulling fine like i said going to gear nice as well lovely select on it i mean this handle's a bit sort of, sort of falling off this this one's obviously reattaching but the actual gear selection and clutch bite is nice and slick got away a few little bumps and potholes and uneven bits in the road it's actually all right we've got no you know, knocks or bangs i can't any ball joints or drop links they were quite common for drop links on these wishbone arms in particular the bushes in them used to go a lot so you know they are known for needing a few arms and stuff but from what i can hear we don't seem to have any major problems it seems to be actually in decent order it's driving really well it's got no wandering or veering we're not tracking's all nice and good it drives as well as it looks on paper. The problem with this car is just let down by that scruffy wing, which someone's just tried to smarten up, and I get that. But also the sills, they've just been plated. I mean, really, they should have been done properly where they've been cut out and put a proper section in and then sort of smoothed off. I mean, you can rectify them now, even like that, without having to sort of take them all off and start again. Obviously, I'm not gonna go down the route of putting sills on it or something like that, that's a bit too extreme. But they certainly could be improved for very little money. The wing, oh, it's a bit, shame that because it just makes it look so tatty but it could be painted it could be done but it all stacks up as to why would you bother and is it worth bothering with well i'll be honest with you it's done seventy-eight thousand miles it's a two litre diesel it's got loads of life left in it i've seen these i've mot these with two hundred thousand miles on still going strong they're good cars these hdi Picassos. I quite like them. I think they're a proper good rugged thing and they make a very practical family bus. They make a great little van for somebody who's got to put the seats down. I know lads have used these as basically just like as conventional vans because they're so broomy. Put them seats down, you've got the cheap tax element of it. You're not paying commercial road tax and you can still use it as a car. There is there is multiple of uses for something like this. I'm sure there'll be someone out there who'll want it, buy it. Even like it is now, even in its scruffy state, it's still got a use because it drives so well and it's got good history. It's had a cam belt done. It's had a clutch done. Everything major what you could want doing on a car has been done. It's been looked after in reason. You know, it's, it's, the owner's done his best. I'm really impressed how this is driving. It's absolutely faultless. And it was such a shame to scrap it. And we can't, I can't allow that to happen. It's got more use to someone else. It's got a short MOT, so it's gonna need MOT in. But then we've got to do something with it. You either sell it as it is, which is probably the most sensible thing to do, really. Or do I try and smarten it up? Do I try and potentially retail it? It's not retailable in this condition like this. With that wing, it's too scruffy. You know, I'm selling old cars, but even I've got standards. It's just a little bit too scruffy and the sills are a bit scruffy. They just want smartening up. I want to keep to take a lot of money to solve it. I can smarten them sills up pretty easily. They've just been plated quite, no, not even a badly plated job. They're all right, they're, they're solid. It's just, just a cheap job just to get it for an MOT. But they want flattening off a bit and just maybe just sort of smoothing off and just maybe put a new Schultz line on it. 
something thick like a rubber guard we use we use like a bottom guard it basically goes in a gun like a shorts it goes on really thick but it gives a nice like a, a, but it gives a really nice effect to the sill and covers up a multitude of sins so as long as the sills are after check them out are actually really solid and if we can't we've been welding it for 20 minutes isn't going to make much difference but we can make them solid and they're all right probably less than 20 quid i could smarten them sills up the wing i can get the paint man on that potentially 120 50 quid somewhere around there to probably paint that wing it's a big old wing and blend it get a new badge for it go on ebay we'll get a Picasso badge from somewhere they're just a stick on badge put that back on the wings it'll look a bit odd otherwise and that's really it um so the bodywork wise smarting it up isn't gonna cost a lot of money to do and some people might think he's daft but it's fixing an old 05 Picasso but when it's got this good mileage on it, this good history, and it drives so well, if we can smarten this up, there is absolutely no reason why this can't be a 1295, 1395 car for someone. And it only owes us £250. I think if we have a look underneath this car, and underneath's okay, that's the main thing. We've got to make sure underneath we've not got any major problems that are lurking under there that could potentially scupper this. But if it's pretty all right underneath, and it just wants a few little bits here and there, I think 300 quid could transform this car. I really do. I think we can sort the wing out, I think we can sort the sills out, I think we can get it for an MOT and put a new MOT on it and then put a few bits on it, strip the brakes down, anything else we need to do maintenance wise, service it and get it out the door. I think we could do it probably for 300 quid. That would be my sort of target budget if you like. Well then the car would owe us less than 600 pounds, 550 pounds it would owe us for a car that hopefully will look then smart, we'll have 12 months MOT, be serviced, we've had a clutch done, we've had a cam belt done. And if we flog this out the door at 12 13 95 somewhere around there what i think it'd be a nice reliable car for someone they can get a few years out of with a nice we have a nice profit out of it and to be honest with you from a reliability from a reliability standpoint these aren't that bad i've sold loads of these over the years and to be honest with you if as long as you send them out right these they never really come back they're quite a good old bus and when they've got this two liter hdi in they are pretty reliable they don't really give them any too many issues so i'm tempted to go on with it i think before we get ahead of ourselves what we need to do get back into the workshop let's get underneath it and have a look underneath because they do suffer with oil leaks these engines I've, I've had a few over the years of bad oil leaks so i want to make sure we've got no no problems there because i don't want to be start putting turbo chargers on it or you know major oil leak problems or dealing with crankshaft pulleys or all that then that might just force the answer basically that we might need just to move it on in the trade but let's have a look let's see because so far i've been pretty impressed with this car and i'd like to think that we might not see many too many horrors underneath so let's get it back in the workshop get it up in the air and see what the old citron's like underneath right god it's warm today the following day so i didn't get a chance to get it on the ramp uh, as quick as i'd like got back to the garage and we had test drives everywhere so i'll go sort them out anyway now we've had the picasso on the ramp uh, my colleagues just had a quick look underneath it and to be fairness it's actually quite solid i did just poke my head under it again just now myself the main thing i was looking at was corrosion on those sills making sure that underneath they were okay actually quite solid like i said not the best job but it's do what possible for an mot i understand what's why they've done it but i can smarten them sills up no problem uh can get them right again uh, like i said the, the metal's all solid the rest of the sills are quite good so not too worried there and if it's all, I think, to be honest with you, I'm going to have a go at tidying this Picasso up and see where we go with it. I think it's worth doing. Um, I say I'm going to queue it up first for paint. So we'll get that wing done first before we do anything else. Get that wing right. Because it just looks so scruffy. It ruins the car. And it just... I've already had people on already asking for cheapies. And as soon as I showed them the car, they've liked it. But then they're looking at it from the driver's side. And they're going to say, oh, it's going for paint for the wing on the opposite side he's doing. As soon as you see that, it just kills it. Because it just looks like, like I said, someone's had a go with a flip can and just made a hash of it. So I need to get this looking right, get them sills straight, get that wing straight, polish it up, valet it, and it will look a completely different car. And it's not going to owe us a great deal of money. This will probably end up owing us five or six hundred pounds done, uh, and I can sell it out the door with confidence. So I said underneath doesn't need too much. I think there's a tire that's got a few cracks on it, which we'll replace. We'll end up just stripping and cleaning the brakes anyway. We'll do those sort of things, and obviously we'll tidy them sills up. And that's pretty much it, to be honest with you. Oh, and a gearbox mount. You could do the gearbox mount as well. Very common on these. So we'll uh, we'll do that as well. Uh, but that's it. So we're going to press on with it. I will cover it in a part two. So I'll show you before and after uh, when it's got a price board in the window and we'll see if it made the right call on it i think it will sell i think we can make it look a different car to what it looks now 
So check that out in the next video, guys. See how we get on with this Picasso. I think I'm making the right call. If you disagree, if you think it's just fit for the scrapyard, let me know in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on the Citroen Picasso itself. So thank you for watching this one, guys. Please check out Vehicle Score in the link description. Get yourself over there. Completely free to use. And if you want any checks carrying out, don't forget to use the Car UK 15 promo code to get a discount on any checks you want carrying out with Vehicle Score. Thank you for watching this one, guys. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And I'll see you all in the next video.